Recording in progress. All right. Good evening, uh, professional project managers, uh, current and future members. Uh, welcome to today's event, Fast Track Your PMO at Ivory Coast Chapter. Uh, we are pleased to be virtual guests uh, in uh, I Yes, Corin, can you please help me? I have. I've muted. Sorry, Nadim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, uh, we are pleased to be virtual guests uh, in uh, Ivory ah. Coast, uh, which is famous not only for chocolates and palm oil, but also it's uh, the largest exporter for um, for cocoa beans. Uh, and uh, behind all of these industries uh, stands uh, the proper project management. So I'm Nadine, the event and accreditation manager at PMO Global Institute, as you can see. And today I will be your moderator. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I'd like to say um, thank you to the brilliant uh, PMI Ivory Coast uh, chapter team. Uh, they did a terrific preparatory job. Uh, and um, we also are thankful to all of you for coming uh, for today's evening event, Fast Track Your PMO. And um, I guarantee that uh, you will uh, get the value and it will be also joyful for you. At the end of our main session, we will uh, play the game, Kahoot game. And uh, uh, five lucky winners will get great prizes. So cheer up and stay tuned till the end of the event. And now, first of all, I'd like um, uh, to call on this stage, the president of PMI Ivory Coast chapter, Auguste Bowie. He is uh, the computer engineer, PMP ITIL. IT and Togo. He has extensive experience in leading IT projects and business transformation projects. He also holds an MBA and a doctorate uh, student in business ethics. Uh, Auguste Bowie is the president of PMI Ivory Coast chapter. So welcome, Auguste. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Nadine, for this uh, very nice introduction. Bonjour à tous les participants qui sont connectés. Bienvenue au chapitre Côte d'Ivoire du PMI. Nous sommes heureux de recevoir, à l'occasion de cet événement, le PMI Global Institute, une organisation non gouvernementale qui fait la promotion des bureaux de projet. On les qui fait la promotion des bureaux de projet. Ces membres, ces membres sont majoritairement des gestionnaires de projets et des gestionnaires de programmes. Parmi ces, ces activités de sensibilisation aux enjeux des bureaux de projet, le PMO Global Institute organise avec les différents chapitres du PMI des webinaires. C'est dans ce cadre que se tient notre rencontre de ce jour. Elle a été organisée par notre vice-président chargé du développement professionnel, Simon Adou, et assistée de volontaires très dégourdis et engagés, que je vous demande de remercier en envoyant des petits likes sur la plateforme. Je remercie aussi l'équipe du PMO Global Institute, en particulier notre point focal, Nadine, Koukoskaya, qui n'a ménagé aucun effort pour que cet événement se tienne. Je remercie enfin tous les panélistes, Les Asielou, qui représentera dignement notre chapitre et partagera avec vous les enjeux de la mise en œuvre des bureaux de, de projet dans nos pays. Corinne O'Brien, qui nous parlera des opportunités de carrière qu'offrent les bureaux de projet, et Mahmoud El Saoud, qui mettra l'accent sur les moyens d'accélérer la mise en œuvre d'un bureau de projet. J'espère vivement que vous allez adorer ce temps de partage et qu'il vous en tirera 
de, et que vous en tirerez des bénéfices pour le développement de votre carrière. Merci et bon webinaire. Hello to all the participants who are connected. Welcome to Ivory Coast chapter of PMI. We are pleased to receive for this event the PMO Global Institute, a non-governmental organization that promotes project management offices. Its members are mostly project manager or program managers. Among its activity to raise awareness of the issue of project office, the PMO Global Institute organized webinars with PMI chapter worldwide. It is in this context that our meeting is today. It was organized by the VP in charge of professional development, Simon Adou, assisted by resourceful and committed volunteers that I ask you to thank by sending likes on this platform. I would also like to thank the PMO Global Institute team, especially our focal point, Nadine Koskuyaya, who spare no effort to make this event happen. Finally, I thank all the panelists, Blaise Asielu, who will represent our chapter with dignity and share with you the challenges of implementing how to design PMI office in our countries. Corinne O'Brien, who will talk to us about the career opportunities offered by project management offices. And Mahmoud El Saoud, who will focus on ways to accelerate the implementation of project office. I hope that you will love this moment and that it will benefit you for the development of your careers. Thank you and have a wonderful webinar. Thank you, Auguste. Thank you for such an uh, amazing introduction. And uh, now I'd like uh, to share my screen and um, start uh, our event from the short introduction. So um, uh, let's uh, start from our learning objectives. Today, all participants will learn how PMO set up works, they will learn tools and techniques to apply CB PMO framework. You will increase your visibility and become recognized within uh, your organization and peer circle. Uh, you will make use of the best practices in PMO and increase your success rate of your projects. And you will earn two PDUs, two contact hours. So uh, all participants today will get uh, for free the CB PMO framework. Uh, we'll get access to the largest PMO community. Five lucky winners uh, will get full year PMO Global Institute membership, uh, which actually costs $89, but uh, you will get it for free and you will get 10% discount on PMO GI PMO certification program. Uh, also, in, at the end uh, of our main session, uh, we will uh, play the Kahoot game um, where you will get um, uh, the regular membership uh, and you will be able to download this PMO guidebook. Uh, who we are? PMO Global Institute is the global body for PMO certifications representing global project management offices, including project, program and portfolio managers involved in defining, establishing and running high performing PMOs in and across industry sectors. The objective of PMO Global Institute is simple, to make PMO learning available to project professionals across the globe through certifications, events, networking and hands-on knowledge sharing. Uh, let's uh, have a look uh, at some numbers. So uh, we have members in 100 plus countries. Uh, also, we have 70 plus partners in 60 countries. Uh, 
46% uh, of PMO directors uh, said that their organization doesn't understand the value of project management. 68% uh, of stakeholders perceive their PMO as bureaucratic. And now uh, I'd like uh, to pass uh, the floor uh, to uh, Blaze. Uh, um, to Blaze Asilo. Uh, Blaze is a passionate uh, uh, professional in telco, IT, fintech, banks, with 15 years of experience in Africa, Europe, and Asia. Uh, over the 15 years, Blaze has worked in a project management in Ivory Coast and more than 22 other countries in Africa and Europe. His uh, passion for PMO projects, program, and uh, portfolio has been recognized uh, uh, with the key awards like uh, Project Management Institute uh, Certificate of Appreciation and the uh, Excellence in the Middle East and Africa, Nokia Middle East and Africa Award of Excellence uh, in Managing Digital Intelligence and Big Data, and Alcatel Lucent Europe East and Africa Award of Excellence and Innovation. So uh, right now, Blaise will uh, share challenges of PMO in Ivory Coast. And uh, Blaise, the floor is yours. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Nadine. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. I would also like to, to greet everyone here. I think we have 32 participants. Uh, live, that's very wonderful. And uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us because your single contribution, your single question, your single comment will contribute to the development of project management in Africa, in Africa and in the, in the world. So thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Um, ask you if you can see, uh, to share. So I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm not going to, to come back to the introduction, the presentation that I did, uh, just did. I will jump straight in the, in the challenges that we can face in terms of uh, implementing or maybe in the, uh, the work of the PMO. Uh, here we mentioned Ivory Coast because uh, it is a chapter Ivory Coast, but I think all the challenges that we are going to discuss present here uh, apply in the region in Africa and uh, most of the country where there is a PMO because the standard is uh, worldwide. It is not only a standard for Ivory Coast. So um, here, sorry, one second, okay. So um, before I go uh, in details in terms of uh, uh, challenges of what the PMO role or function will face, or also in terms of uh, challenges in implementing the PMO, I'm going first to present you what is the PMO because I know the audience here, not everyone maybe has a clear view of what we call PMO. So the PMO, Project Management Office, is uh, a, a body, a standard in a company that uh, managing organization, project, program, portfolios. Uh, it focuses on uh, <clears throat> standardization, culture, mindset. They can also prioritize different projects in the company, put together the different projects in different departments and uh, support each project manager uh, in the department, bring standards and make sure that all the projects that are executed in the company, if we have many, all of them are aligned to the strategic ambition of the company. So the behind the word uh, PMO, we have different, uh, different, uh, different parts, we can say. We have the project management officer from down here. Uh, the project management officer is a uh, more um, a centralized for project manage, project uh, management methodology, best practices and processes. So its main focus is on projects. We also have 
PMO as program management officer, where the main focus is on programs, program just to support the different program in the, uh, in the company or maybe in the country, because if we say Ivory Coast is launching a program to develop the public administration here, it may uh, be subdivided in different program, maybe uh, healthcare, uh, uh, health, uh, e-education and all. So the program management officer will be the body. It may be one person or a team that will support all these programs, support the program manager, make sure that the activities are aligned with what is the, the, uh, the ultimate ambition of the of the of the programs, I mean, uh, at uh, country level, we also have what we call portfolio management officer. The portfolio management officer is sometimes called enterprise portfolio because he's sitting at a higher level in charge of all the portfolio of project in the company or maybe uh, in the department. Now. If we take aside all this in terms of our program, project, and portfolio, we have the type of project manager uh, PMO in terms of how the, pre the PMO will interact with the different project managers. So we have what we call the supportive project PMO. The supportive PMO has low level of control on project. He is more a supporting person a support, he gives support to the different project managers or implementation manager. In the middle, we have the controlling project PMO. He's, um, he's uh, uh, relatively involved in the project, but more in controlling because maybe the project managers have higher autonomy. So he is moving to the position where he will control whether everything is going on fine or not. But you have also what we call the directive project manager, PMO, sorry. The directive PMO can even go to the, to, 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 to go to the level where the PMO himself will manage the project as project manager, or maybe the PMO will dedicate someone from the team to manage the project. Sometimes it's happened when it is a strategic project or uh, maybe a project that is new to the company. And sometimes the PMO, the project manager um, report directly to the PMO. But behind all this, the ultimate goal is to assure, to inform, to support the company, to govern, to standardize. So this overall, what we can have as definition of what is the role of the PMO. So now that said, we are going to move to what the PMO can, can face as challenge Okay, so um, the first challenge that uh, I see, uh, that uh, I, I see from my experience and also from discussing with other um, uh, PMOs in the sector, in the region, in also Ivory Coast, is more related to the definition of the PMO role itself, the PMO role. So this challenge I've, I've subdivided in three main, three main parts from organization level. First of all, sometimes the, the, the challenge, the first challenge is that there is a, there's no real understanding from the company itself, what will be the role of the PMO. So here, what I actually recommend is that uh, from the C level, or maybe for the those people that want to build a PMO or maybe hire a PMO or put in place a PMO, the best way is to understand the strategy of the company or maybe the department. What is the challenge face? If there are many projects that required cross-functional, uh, maybe a synchronization, coordination, and uh, maybe if the company is a process of fast learning, if the company enters a learning process, then it can really uh, use, be useful to have the PMO. But most important, when the team is in place, the C-level should present and then uh, educate other members, uh, other department or the company to understand why the PMO is there, what is the role, where they will be. Now, still at the organization level, we have what is expected from each division, each department, depending on the company, what is expected uh, from the PMO? 
or uh, and all. This may be a challenge in terms of understanding the role that the PMO is coming to, 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 to play in the company. So here, as a PMO, you can educate people, you can explain the department that this is how we are going to work together. This is the processes, this is how we can support. So then the, 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 the whole division will better understand why the PMO is there to, uh, in the company. Now, in the middle, I also identify some, some uh, challenges in terms of uh, uh, the scope of the PMO. As we saw uh, just previously, the PMO can be at portfolio level, at project level, but some company may want the PMO uh, to even move to operation. I mean, follow the project and also move to operation. So um, if, if the scope is not clearly defined, it may be a challenge for the team, the PMO uh, function in the company to know really where to focus. And then, and then behind, uh, in terms of evaluation of the PMO, if the, the scope is not that clear, it may be a challenge later to evaluate if the PMO in place, uh, the, uh, the structure or maybe the team is uh, doing what it is supposed to do. Now, uh, another challenge that I also identify is more to the PMO himself, the team, or maybe the PMO itself. We, we, I just explained that uh, the PMO may be supportive, controlling, or directive. So at what moment should you be directive, controlling, supportive? This is more to the PMO. That's why I will just say before I continue that, the role of PMO Global uh, Institute is really key in terms of uh, uh, delivering training certification that can help the, any PMO or even the organization to understand uh, for which project should I be directive, for which one should I be uh, supportive or controlling. Most of the time, when the company is growing in, in, uh, in its process, in the maturity, in the beginning, where things need to be organized, the PMO may be directive to build everything, to put in place everything before uh, moving uh, progressively to controlling and supporting when the different project managers and also the different products are matured and uh, require less, uh, less supervision from the, from the PMO. So here it is more the PMO skills to understand when to switch between uh, how or when to switch between the different types of the project. So now, beyond the definition of what we call the PMO that I identify as a first, first challenge, we also have the challenge that comes that come from the strategy alignment. So the PMO normally, the main role of PMO is to synchronize or put all together in terms of project. If we have a company with many projects, many divisions, maybe a company in different countries, the role will be to, to put all together to, to, to support the different project manager and mainly to make sure that every day all projects are aligned to the vision, to the ambition, to the strategy of the company. So if you see here on the left, any company, there is a, what we call the vision, the mission, where the company exists. And then we have the strategy and the objective. In the middle, we have all that's related to PMO project management, portfolio, strategy planning, program, and operation. And this is where the strategy will be implemented implemented, sorry. So the implementation of the strategy is through portfolio, project, program, and all. And then down we have operation and all. And first, one of the first challenge that's actually come here is at executive level to really support the PMO function that uh, that have been created, that have been uh, initiated by the C-level or by the executive. So once the team is in place, there should be a kind of a culture, PMO culture sharing from top level to everyone to understand what, why the PMO is there and what, uh, what is the expected from them. And then the most important, since the PMO will be Implementing, when I say PMO, it, will be, it may be one person, a, a group, a team. 
since the PMO will be implementing the strategy, the vision, it will be important that uh, they are associated, they are maybe uh, informed in terms of uh, uh, ambition, vision, and key indicators of the, <clears throat> of, the, of the company. If this is not done in the implementation, it may be a challenge for the team to, to really assess whether what is being done is uh, really in line uh, with the vision of the company. Now, moving down, we also have, um, uh, I discussed with a friend that uh, just told me uh, that uh, sometime uh, they are throwing project to him that, okay, this is a project that uh, uh, we have to execute. This is the cost, this is the plan. These are the, I mean, the scope and all. And uh, uh, he did not actually contribute to the validation, to the assessment, to the validation of the project. And this is a real challenge to a PMO, uh, to the PMO, because uh, if you did not contribute to the uh, development, to the assessment, to the planning of, uh, of the project, uh, maybe mainly the cost on cost, it will be later difficult for you to, to, to really follow and make sure that uh, uh, the project as it was conceived is in line with the vision of the company. Now, if we move down, once the project are identified, another challenge is that uh, as a PMO you can, you can face is in terms of uh, bringing adoption, you may identify gaps in the process, in the process and the procedure in the processes, and then you will share some recommendation. Now it is good to send recommendation, but also it is also good to see that they are applied really. So this may be a challenge that is faced, but something that is important is communication, education. If you see that uh, it is not happening as you expected, you can go to the people, to the team, to the dedicated team, and then discuss with them, come back and, sorry, and prove that, okay, actually it will be beneficial for them, for the company, and it will help everyone to be aligned with the, uh, the ambition of the company. Now, there is another one is that um, since uh, 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 the, the main uh, function is to align uh, the, the action with the ambition, there there is another challenge. If all the upper points that I just mentioned are not really done, so uh, C level uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, C level contribution, C level support can really help to uh, the PMO to really uh, be very efficient. Now, if we move down in the team, because to implement the, uh, the strategy, we have the organization, the resources. Here, what is very uh, risky is sometimes the sharing of information. Some people may see the, 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 the PMO has police, the controller, because they may be reluctant to share some information because they may think that if they, they share the information, it will play against them because maybe it will appear in the KPI in the report. So maybe they may not share the right information or maybe at the right moment. So overall, these are the, the two big set of uh, challenges that uh, I would like to share with you. And uh, it is not exhaustive. We have uh, many that uh, I got from Paul that I'll show you later at the end. So now beyond all those challenges, because any function, if we take me even CEO, uh, department manager, or maybe a senior manager and all, every function has its own um, uh, challenges. But beyond the challenges of the PMO that the PMO can face, or maybe in terms of implementing the PMO, there are very, very good benefit for any, any company that, uh, for any company that implement this. If we take, for example, the company that hires the right people first, put them in the right condition second, and then with the right uh, skill, I mean, of the PMO team and the right environment, it can be very beneficial to the, to the company in terms of putting all together, improving strategic alignment. So 
there will be higher value realization from the from all the projects uh, from the ambition and action because there will be better synchronization and some project may be even canceled because the PMO may identify that this one is not actually in line with the ambition of the company or maybe this project will be too costly so we have to to reject it so it will be very beneficial and second also on operation because the PMO is there for continuous improvement. They have the best practices. They have a cross-functional view, 360 uh, uh, view. If you take a company with maybe marketing business or maybe a, a digital intelligence team, the team PMO team will have that view vision from all the department. He may rapidly identify the need of resource in a department, the flow of information from one department to the, 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 the other. And also in terms of innovation, innovation, since it is the repository of all the lesson learned, KPI best practices, the PMO can be a very good asset in terms of learning capability of the company. Now, last but uh, not least, the PMO can really help to improve visibility. Imagine we have a company spread in many countries or that have many divisions, the PMO team that can be that link between those different divisions, those different countries in terms of cross, uh, I mean, cross-functional information sharing, but also uh, putting in place data-driven decision-making to all the director or the company. So just uh, is some uh, maybe uh, view that uh, I show a statistic from uh, from 25 top PMO. It shows that uh, there is improvement in terms of strategic alignment, alignment up to 43 percent. And uh, in terms of cost saving per project, if um, <clears throat> if uh, there is a better alignment the application of best practices from the PMO, it can really help to save money and also decrease the failing, the, the rate of failing in the terms of project. So uh, before I close, um, and then I hand over to Nadine, I would like to show you some, some uh, a pool and uh, take the opportunity to thank all the members of the PMI uh, Ivory Coast and everyone that contributed to the, to the pool. Uh, we actually uh, got a participant uh, uh, mean day of uh, 28 person and most of them are from Ivory Coast. And we have sector, many sectors. That is really interesting. I was even surprised to see education in the top of the, of the, uh, of the contribution. And uh, to the question whether there is a, a PMO in the company, most of them said yes. And uh, to the question whether the PMO is really needed in the in the company, there was a forty percent that said yes, but um, many did not uh, answer to that question. But it actually shows that um, when the company is getting bigger, bigger in size, and when there are many projects, the PMO function is really uh, key. They also mentioned key challenges that come to enrich what I just shared with you in terms of process um, uh, change, the spread of culture, how to the, 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 the shock of organization capture, uh, culture adaptation, but also they also share some, some values in terms of speed in setting environment, good impact, centralization, and sharing of information, helping to identify the right KPI also, uh, and also helping in project execution in terms of methodology, better stakeholder management, better control advisory, easy uh, in audit and control. So on top of what I just shared with, with you in terms of challenges, uh, the contribution of the chapter also here uh, comes to improve and then add additional from different angle because the challenges in the company may be different from the challenges in other sector. So this high range of sector here that contribute to, to the challenge is really beneficial. So um, that's all. That's all. Uh, that's all the challenges that I would like to share with you. I'll hand over to Nadine and later we have the Q&A uh, section where we can come back on some of the points. Thank you very much, Nadine. Right. 
Thank you. Thank you, Blaise, uh, for such well-structured and uh, a vivid presentation. You also put some diagrams uh, that uh, shows and highlighted um, also challenges and values. So it was so practical. Uh, I'm sure that all participants uh, enjoyed uh, your presentation. From uh, your perspective, your experience, uh, it's always very valuable. So, and thank you. And now we are moving on. So right now, dear participants, uh, I'd like to emphasize uh, that uh, now we will have uh, two sessions. Uh, and uh, starting from this time, uh, please take notes uh, and uh, be careful because uh, based on uh, this uh, following um, information, we will uh, have the quiz. Uh, and um, uh, you uh, will uh, need to answer um, questions quickly in order to win uh, some prizes. Uh, and also, uh, I think uh, now it's time, we have 41 participants, now it's time to turn on your cameras. We would like to see your smiling faces and make a joint photo. So please uh, um, turn on your cameras, let's look at each other. Not only uh, look at speakers, we want to see your <laughs> smiling faces. Yes, really, I love this. Come on, folks. I know it's late in the day, but it's just for a little photo. Let's get you on LinkedIn. <laughs> Come on, people. Let's see your smiles. Let's see your smile. <laughs> Turn on your camera. Yes, Kevin. Yes. Yeah, Jean, Colin. Colin. on. Listen. Hey, turn on Fantastic. your camera. Fantastic. Don't be shy. We want to have a look at you. <laughs> Francois, Francois is upside down. Hi, Francois. <laughs> Auguste, thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. So after three, let's say PMO. One, two, three. PMO. PMO. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, thank you so much. Um, now I'm going to hand over to uh, our next speaker, uh, Mahmoud uh, El Saud. Mahmoud has more than 30 years of business experience, uh, out of which more than 17 years of experience in project management. Uh, Mahmoud has been working uh, as PMO for many years. And uh, he, now he is the founder and CEO of PMO Concept for Management uh, Consultations in Cairo, Egypt. He has a long and deep experience uh, in project management, uh, process improvement, and quality management. Mahmoud has worked uh, uh, with a variety of national and international uh, companies. Uh, he also holds uh, the master's degree in computer science. Uh, uh, Mahmoud is, uh, has such certifications as uh, PMP, ITAL, CB, PMO, PMO, GI, ABPI. So now, Mahmoud, the floor is yours. Please welcome. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, do you see my screen now? We can see okay. it. Yes, Mahmoud. yes, Perfect. I can see. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for attendance. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, many thanks to PMI Every Post Chapter, uh, Dr. August, Blaze, and uh, all of the staff for this nice invitation. Uh, and thanks for all audience. Uh, I'd like to um, uh, pray that all of them uh, will enjoy and uh, uh, get benefit from this uh, fantastic event. Uh, 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 just I'd like to, to uh, remind uh, please that he uh, may uh, forget some uh, uh, challenge he, uh, when he lists uh, challenges. A uh, few days ago, when I, I, I'm using um, uh, Google search uh, for searching about uh, uh, some PMO topic, uh, I wrote the word PMO. 
uh, and I got uh, for uh, uh, suddenly uh, that uh, Prime Minister Office of India, Prime Minister Office of Singapore, and uh, uh, many uh, uh, websites like this. Um, then uh, I, I consider it as a signal that um, maybe uh, PMO practitioners, maybe uh, in the next uh, near future, maybe prime ministers. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think, please? Do, do you like to be a, a prime minister in your country or a PMO leader? <laughs> <laughs> why not? So why not? <laughs> why not? Yes. <laughs> you deserve that, sure. <laughs> uh, let's start uh, uh, today. We uh, will uh, uh, speak about uh, uh, KMO, CB KMO framework uh, that's uh, introduced by KMO Global Institute. Uh, just I'd like to, to add to the introduction, nice introduction uh, by Nadine, that I am uh, the CEO of the PMO Consult uh, in Egypt. Uh, PMO Consult uh, is located in Cairo, and it is an authorized business partner uh, for the uh, PMO Global Institute. Uh, actually, it provides a set of uh, services. Uh, just uh, such as training and certification, uh, consultations, auditing, uh, software provision, baseline software provision, and PM and PMO outsourcing. Uh, at the end of the session, uh, we may share uh, our contacts. Uh, now, uh, in uh, PMI Pulse of Profession 2017 report, uh, it stated that 81% of organizations delivering successful projects have PMO. Then maybe uh, uh, this um, uh, can be considered an answer. Uh, why do you have uh, a PMO? Why organizations must have a PMO? Uh, uh, there are many definitions of uh, PMO and the PMO literatures. Um, uh, nearly uh, they are focusing on the, the same idea. Uh, according to the PMO Global Institute definition, PMO is a group of consistent internal and external entities, uh, stakeholders, interest groups, and etc., which defines, maintains, and ensures standards for project management to deliver strategic initiatives. Required here is uh, to deliver strategic initiatives. This is one of the uh, big benefits uh, of uh, the PMO in any organization. Uh, uh, PMO uh, can be related uh, as uh, a portfolio management office, program management office, uh, and project management office. Um, just as uh, Liz said in a few minutes ago, uh, I don't like to, to repeat the, uh, the definitions, uh, but uh, uh, this is the, the structures uh, uh, available um, mostly in, more, in many organizations uh, uh, right now. Uh, if we view to, to uh, the PMO types as uh, a role, uh, they may be supportive, controlling, directive, or blended or hybrid uh, PMO. Uh, this figure uh, uh, shows uh, many PMO structures and types. Uh, it, uh, it collects the uh, uh, maybe the, the the famous or the well-known uh, uh, PMO structure and types uh, now in, in most of the organizations, uh, starting from the the portfolio management office and in some organizations called the enterprise PMO. The program management office, uh, which may be called uh, center of excellence, and the project management office, with its uh, uh, different types, different role types, uh, as uh, supportive PMO, controlling PMO, uh, directive PMO, or blended uh, uh, PMO. There are many special types or special verbs PMO. Uh, for example. Uh, 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 the special terms, uh, 
TMO, maybe a, a temporary TMO that can be uh, uh, disappeared or stopped uh, when the, the special verb was uh, 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 finished. Uh, uh, there are also the digital TMO, uh, which is the, the TMO that uh, is run uh, under the control of uh, some software or technology uh, uh, software. Uh, the compliance PMO, uh, which is a PMO that's compliant with some uh, uh, quality discipline, uh, um, uh, for example, uh, ISO or uh, CMMI. Uh, the agile PMO, which uh, implements the uh, uh, agile approach. Uh, and there, there is a special type of PMOs um, uh, that is uh, uh, that serves uh, a business unit department or division uh, inside the organization, not the organization as uh, the entire organization. Uh, that's called the organizational team. Uh, PMO benefits, why organizations uh, create PMO, why they need PMO. Uh, that's to, to, to provide organizations with standard and best practices, uh, providing communication means between the uh, uh, project teams and the, uh, uh, the other uh, uh, functional, uh, functions inside the organization, uh, to provide uh, uh, governance systems that uh, uh, specify roles and uh, responsibilities uh, every function in the, uh, or the in the PMO itself uh, to prepare a set of metrics uh, to run projects uh, to as disseminate uh, a set of uh, knowledge management environment or no knowledge management environment and transfer uh, within the organization uh, to participate in uh, uh, the quality and the efficiency of project outputs, products or services. Uh, to optimize resource utilization uh, for, uh, for the uh, resources of the, uh, the uh, projects in the organization, uh, to uh, guarantee project monitoring and control for all projects, and most importantly, uh, project selection and prioritization uh, for the uh, uh, projects of the organization. Now, uh, PMO is uh, actually is a, a, a tool for change inside the organization. It's a mean of change. This change must have a purpose, uh, must be measured, and it's uh, uh, con uh, uh, continuously optimized. And uh, uh, hence, the, uh, uh, this PMO approach introduced by the PMO Global Institute, PMO, uh, P for purpose, M for measure, and uh, O for optimize. Uh, this approach uh, can be applied all the time, whatever the uh, uh, PMO structure, whatever the PMO role in the organization, it has to uh, uh, follow this approach in order to, uh, for the organization to get benefit of the team. Now, uh, let's th think with each other. What should be PMO's KPI, key performance indicators? Uh, this question is for all our audiences. Uh, please share with us uh, at least five uh, smart KPIs. Top KPIs from your uh, uh, opinion. Uh, come on, guys, and uh, supply us with uh, your thoughts. You can uh, uh, use the chat box. Come on, come on, I'm waiting. What do you think? Most important KPIs or the top KPIs you think uh, for uh, a succeeded MO. Please, what do you think, Dr. August?
in place, rate of project success, strategic alignment, process improvement. Very good. Uh, Kevin, budget estimation. Good one. Good planning. Another good one, Kevin. Thank you. Who else? Nadine, revenue. Corin, satisfy sponsors quickly. Oh, very nice. Destin, the number of projects succeeded. Thank you, Destin. Good one. Dominique, resource utilization. Very, very good. August, benefits. Yes, for sure. Francois, budget, planning, uh, procedures, follow up, resources, engagement. Fantastic. Nadine, return on investment. Yes, yes, sure. Please. Value realization from projects, uh, projects, portfolios. Yes, exactly. Price, time. Yes, you mean time management. Uh, Dawuda, quality. Okay, very good. Hany, number of change re requests. Yes, number of change requests uh, uh, implemented. Yes, exactly. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's speak, uh, uh, now let's uh, uh, define the KPI, KPIs. PMO KPIs are uh, a set of uh, uh, metrics, uh, if you can say, uh, that can uh, be used to evaluate the performance of the uh, PMO. Uh, if we take uh, our time to set this uh, uh, set of KPIs well and uh, uh, come up with uh, 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 well-known or well-defined KPIs, uh, for sure, we can evaluate uh, uh, very well our uh, PMO. Uh, there are many P PMO KPIs we can uh, list here. Uh, for example, the percent of uh, de delivered projects, the percent of uh, projects versus uh, status, um, uh, have not changed over a, a defined period. Uh, uh, the percent of projects terminated, the percent of projects failed to deliver. You can compare this percent uh, uh, for this period, for a specific period, with uh, uh, a previous period. Uh, for, for example, quarter. Uh, for example, you can uh, compare the number of uh, delivered projects or the, the percentage of uh, uh, delivered projects uh, in this period in this quarter with that of uh, uh, previous quarter or uh, between uh, uh, the period of before uh, we creating our PMO with the period after creating the PMO. Uh, also uh, improved stakeholder satisfaction percent, uh, overall budget forecast against actual cost, uh, planned in date versus actual completion date, uh, HR or resource forecast versus resource allocated, uh, identified risks uh, versus overall risks, improved time to market, number of process improved uh, by the PMO and uh, to the benefit of the organization. Uh, now uh, we are going to uh, speak about the framework. Uh, guess what is a, frame, a framework means? A framework means ac uh, according to uh, Collins English Dictionary, uh, is a particular set of rules, ideas, or beliefs which we you use in order to deal with problems or to design to decide what to do. Uh, this is the definition of the uh, uh, framework. Our CBP MO framework. Uh, why we we, we uh, 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 define this this abbreviation? Uh, uh, CBPMO uh, stands for Certified Based PMO Framework, uh, and this is the name of the the, the certificate uh, PMO Global Institute provides. By the way, uh, uh, Certified Based PMO, uh, and it is the, the same name of the the, uh, the framework. Uh, 
this is a framework uh, used to build, monitor, and assess PMO in an organization. It is a PMO Global Institute trademark. It is the most comprehensive PMO framework in the PMO world. Uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, there are many frameworks in the uh, PMO world. Um, many of them uh, focus on one side or two sides or, or, or few sides uh, uh, from the PMO activities. But uh, uh, believe me, uh, the CB PMO framework is the most comprehensive one that covers all the sides, all the traits of the PMO uh, and um, uh, no activity can be uh, uh, used in this uh, context uh, uh, that's not uh, exist in the PMO framework. So uh, it is very valuable to uh, learn this framework and uh, take a look about its contents. Uh, why we are speaking about frameworks? Um, according to a, a survey delivered by TPG Group uh, in Europe in 2020, uh, said that organizations delivering successful projects, top performance and high performance have a PMO framework. That's why we have to uh, uh, know about uh, uh, this framework and try to get benefit of it and to implement in our organizations. This is the framework. Uh, seems to be complex, right? Don't worry, we will simplify everything. Uh, this CDT MO framework contains a set of uh, uh, processes. This process is uh, every uh, process uh, covers some trait uh, in the uh, PMO. Uh, you may uh, go through most of them or all of them according, according to the uh, uh, structure of the PMO you choose for your organization. Uh, this uh, PMO is explained uh, in detail in the PMO guidebook of PMO Global Institute, uh, which is a guide to the project management principles and standards. This PMO guidebook, uh, guidebook uh, it's around um, maybe uh, 150 uh, pages. Uh, the, uh, they all cover the, the uh, uh, building blocks of the uh, CD PMO framework uh in details and this guidebook contains also a set of templates uh checklists and guidelines for how to deal or how to implement the framework in your organization uh if we if you uh win uh, the the prizes at the end of this uh, event uh you will uh, you can uh, uh, download this uh, uh, PMO guidebook, valuable PMO guidebook. Uh, the CPPMO framework contains uh, around four layers. The foundation layer, the executable layer, the supporting layer, and the leadership and sponsorship layer. We will go through all of them uh, right now. First, the uh, uh, foundation layer. The foundation layer uh, contains the required processes to build a new PMO or develop an existing PMO to be aligned with the latest PMO best practice in the PMO world. Uh, second, the uh, executable layer contains from uh, the foundation layer contains uh, around seven uh, seven processes the uh, executive layer contains also uh, uh, seven uh, processes uh, this process is used uh, uh, to learn new how to build the, or the steps uh, required to build your PMO then the supportive layer consists of uh, around nine uh, processes uh, for um, uh, how to support uh, building uh, and creating uh, uh, and even running uh, your PMO. 
And finally, the leadership uh, layer that contains uh, only three processes. The foundation layer con uh, consists of seven uh, processes, as we, we said now. The first one is the uh, business objectives. Uh, any organization have to have uh, uh, business ob objectives. Uh, the uh, business objective uh, express uh, um, uh, the needs of the organization. Your PMO should reflect the needs of your organization. A business case is required to establish the PMO. It should answer uh, a set of questions. For example, what is the business problem the PMO can solve? Or what are the opportunities has to catch? What are the missing business and project capabilities that the PMO has to introduce? How do we intend to implement these missing capabilities? What are the PMO benefits and cost logics? Actually, PMO has to align with business case and strategy. Second uh, process is the PMO strategy. What's a PMO strategy? It is a comprehensive higher level strategic plan or uh, it's a roadmap to achieve organizational business objective. It focuses on short-term and long-term goals, both the short-term and the long-term. It focuses on the outcome, not the output. It should be aligned with the organization's strategy and derived from the organization's business objectives. The more focus of the PMO on strategic objectives, the more PMO is strategically matured. PMO has to have its uh, PMO vision and PMO mission that, was, that should be aligned with the organization's uh, mission and organization's vision respectively. Uh, next is the uh, PMO health check. Uh, PMO health check, uh, as, uh, as any business unit, uh, PMO has to be checked against its usefulness and benefit to the organization and to other departments within the organization. Health check may be a regular, uh, that's to say uh, quarterly, semi-annually, or at least annually, or maybe ad hoc. Health check output uh, normally is a report of findings and action plan. It is continuous operation and performed regularly. Uh, for a new established PMO, uh, you may uh, ask for, uh, or you may uh, do the health, health check um, uh, by asking the following questions. Uh, what services were defined in the PMO service catalog? What PMO position uh, 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 required to be filled? Uh, what process available and what's required? What tools are required to run the PMO? Uh, also for a mature PMO, you may ask for uh, its strategic alignment. You may ask for uh, uh, metrics and dashboards uh, if they are, exist or um, the extent they are uh, uh, okay for the organization. Uh, you may ask for the risk management and its uh, uh, level of implementation uh, within the organization. You may ask for the stakeholders uh, and their requirements and the, their communication, uh, the, the communication management with them. Uh, once you made the PMO health check, now you, you may need to know uh, up to what uh, level of maturity your PMO is. Uh, it is a tool, uh, uh, the, the uh, PMO maturity mod uh, model uh, is a tool. Uh, for recording and analyzing the level of sophistication of the PMO business. Uh, 
if, if some of you uh, are aware of uh, CMMI, um, CMMI uh, uh, assess the uh, uh, maturity level of the organization's business um, from different sides. Uh, uh, there are many details in it, but uh, uh, here I mean uh, the leveling of the, the maturity assessment CMMI provides. PMO also have the uh, similar uh, PMO uh, maturity leveling. Uh, there are five levels of maturity, uh, initiation level, the uh, level one, uh, level two is the developing level, uh, then level three is the defined level, fourth one is the uh, uh, managed level, and finally, the top is the optimized level. First one, uh, uh, the initiation level, uh, most items, processes, procedures are undefined or maybe uh, defined but imp uh, implemented in ad hoc way. Uh, in level two, the developing level, some PMO processes are established, but not all. In the third level, the defined, uh, all processes are defined and used consistently across projects. Uh, project performance, uh, more predictable. Uh, in the fourth level, the managed or quantitatively managed, some processes are further optimized, but not all. We mean here by optimization is the process of uh, uh, continuous improvement of the, the processes uh, themselves. Uh, it's not a, a one day job, uh, it's a continuous actually uh, uh, creating uh, processes, policies, procedures, and methodologies are uh, it's a continuously opera uh, continuous operation not one day operation. Uh, the top level is the uh, level five optimized. Uh, it is uh, the advanced optimization practices uh, are created out, uh, are car carried out here uh, for all processes of the uh, uh, PMO uh, and the organization. PMO uh, is able to consistently align its objectives with that of the organization. There are a set of uh, indicators or maturity indicators that uh, PMOGI uh, provided in uh, the, uh, uh, its assessment tool for uh, uh, defining the maturity level. Uh, this maturity, maturity indicators uh, includes the governance, resourcing, funding, uh, methodology, uh, dashboarding, reporting, and metrics. Uh, uh, in these tools, uh, we assess uh, the uh, organization uh, through these indicators and give a mark for uh, uh, each uh, indicator and then accumulate uh, uh, these uh, indicators and come up with uh, a single value. This value uh, define the uh, uh, level or the maturity level of the PMO. Uh, once created the uh, PMO maturity assessment, we uh, come to uh, the analysis and definition of the PMO functions. Uh, PMO functions have to be defined well. Uh, for example, ensuring project alignment with strategic initiatives, um, enhancing project execution performance, uh, process improvement and process standardization, uh, source and implement uh, PMO software and automation tool, ensuring uh, project governance, ensuring the delivery of projects, program, portfolio, and portfolio management. Also, uh, optimal management of resources, professional development and coaching for the team, creating collaborative and creative work environment, and finally applying the lessons learned for all the projects. Uh, now uh, we, co we come to the uh, PMO roadmap. Uh, the PMO roadmap defines the uh, PMO scope, uh, which is in scope and uh, which is out in scope. Uh, know where the PMO stands, uh, uh, meaning the, the as, as state, and the uh, define where 
to uh, do you want to see the the uh, TMO the to be state uh, define the business drivers uh, of the PMO uh, uh, aligned with uh, those of the organization. Uh, for example, the market share, the profit, the uh, the, uh, the asset management, the people development, and so on. Uh, finally, uh, in the foundation layer, we come up to the PMO charter. We have to. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, we have to collect the previous information from the, the, uh, the um, uh, these processes into one document called the PMO charter. The PMO charter will be a, a contract uh, between the PMO and the organization. It, it defines uh, the purpose of the PMO, uh, the goals and objectives of the PMO, uh, its organization structure the uh, PMO stakeholders, the initial set of services to be provided by the PMO, uh, the critical success factors of the PMO, uh, and the funding of the PMO, most important. The PMO charter has to be signed off by the sponsor uh, to be effective. Uh, now we uh, uh, go to the next layer, the executable layer. Actually, the executable layer uh, is a layer contains uh, the, the um, uh, processes required to lead your PMO to be effective in your organization. Focuses on measurements required to exhibit the uh, importance of the demonstrate the importance of your PMO uh, and its value added. and puts it on the right track. Uh, first process in the executive layer is the 2PG. 2PG means the uh, policy, procedure, and governance. Uh, a standard for the uh, uh, project management uh, should be administrated under the PMO. Uh, the project management framework is followed by its governance, actually, uh, which uh, consists of policies, processes, methodologies and uh, uh, roles and responsibilities that provide structure and guidance to execute the project activities. Uh, project management templates and forms also uh, have to be uh, uh, designed. Uh, uh, these uh, forms and templates are standards uh, that's used within the uh, uh, projects. Uh, it saves times and efforts for, uh, for using by all the team. Uh, uh, it ensures that all the team use the same language and terminology uh, within their projects. Next one is the develop POC. Uh, what's POC? It stands for a uh, proof of concept. Uh, and instead of uh, implementing the whole uh, PMO structure and the, P PMO, the whole PMO uh, uh, set of uh, processes, uh, you may uh, need to make sure that uh, your PMO or design PMO is, uh, have a feasibility of success. Uh, it is used to assess the viability of the propo proposed uh, PMO roadmap. Uh, it is uh, uh, actually a quick and visible win uh, to make sure that your uh, uh, design PMO will work smoothly. Uh, you may uh, uh, apply your uh, POC uh, in some departments in the organization, not all. Or other way is to uh, implement a set of processes, not all of your design processes uh, in the organization uh, to check its feasibility uh, to win. Uh, then, uh, you have to define the PMO KPIs that we uh, uh, indicated a few minutes ago. Uh, we, you have now to define the PMO roles and develop competences. Uh, PMO roles, uh, for example, uh, the role of the PMO manager or director, um, uh, the PMO officers, the PMO trainers and coaches, uh, the PMO analysts, and the PMO staff, uh, whatever the, the, uh, uh, the need, you create PMO uh, roles and specify the competences required for each of them. Uh, 
also you have to define the uh, uh, communication or reporting lines between those uh, uh, roles. So, uh, uh, yeah. set of skills have to be um, uh, available uh, for for uh, uh, team or manager uh, exclusively. Uh, he had to have a uh, project management experience, uh, real experience on project delivery. Uh, he have, uh, have to ha he has to have uh, stakeholder management uh, skills, uh, strong leadership, um, business expertise, uh, high communication skills, uh, and emotional intelligence. Generally, successful PMO professional has to perform PMO function. Uh, at high level to generate value to the organization. Uh, organizations uh, prefer to measure PMO outcome in terms of uh, finance or money. Uh, so uh, uh, the, evalua the evaluation of a PMO return on investment uh, is very important. Uh, you may uh, need to uh, evaluate the net profit margin the earned value, the cost variance, and the return on investment uh, itself. Uh, a set of uh, return on investment formulas are pro uh, provided by the CPPMO framework uh, that uh, cover this area. Uh, now you have to track the PMO performance uh, uh, to check the value of the PMO to the uh, uh, organization. You have to communicate this value uh, to the organization, to the top level of, uh, um, of the organization, uh, to the uh, uh, other functions of the organization. Uh, uh, some drivers for the, uh, the PMO uh, to track its performance, um, for example, the uh, strategic alignment, the operational efficiency, the uh, uh, project execution, the business value delivered. Uh, finally, the continuous improvement uh, uh, of the uh, uh, PMO work and PMO policies and processes uh, um, uh, can be um, uh, applied uh, through a set of tools like uh, regular reviews and audits, uh, capturing feedbacks from key stakeholders, uh, uh, professional training and education for PMO teams, uh, regular audits uh, on PMO performance. Uh, now we uh, come to the supporting layer, uh, oh. consists of around uh, nine processes. Uh, time passed? <laughs> yeah, five minutes, please. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the supporting layer uh, uh, consists of nine processes. Uh, it contains all the supporting means that are identified and provisioned to enable the PMO to provide value to the organization. Uh, for example, the succession planning, um, uh, this uh, process uh, uh, deals with the, the cases when uh, uh, some uh, of your teams uh, uh, leave the organization, you have to have a, a set of uh, 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 steps to uh, replace them and um, uh, make the uh, they turn over smoothly. Uh, the team structure uh, or the structure of your uh, PMO, uh, you have to, it has to, to be defined uh, well, and there are many tools for, for doing this. The agile PMO, or whether you are implementing the agile approach in uh, your PMO or not, uh, the PMO structure and choosing the right structure that uh, aligned with the, the, your organization's context. Uh, the uh, team or technology stack and uh, uh, choosing the uh, um, software tool that um, may control your team or work, uh, the stakeholder management and how to deal with, with uh, your stakeholders, uh, the environment, um, internal environment and external environment uh, entities and how to deal with them, how to communicate with them, how to get their buy-in. Uh, and set of models, uh, methods, and artifacts that support your work uh, within the PMO. Uh, now, um, 
uh, 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 PMI uh, pulse of profession 2017 states that 46% uh, of PMO directors said that their organization does not understand the value of project management. And here, uh, uh, this uh, leads us to the uh, uh, last uh, layer, the leadership layer. The leadership layers uh, uh, includes three uh, processes. The first one is the leadership. Uh, no meaning to run an effective PMO without effective leadership. Uh, focused and uh, uh, proper leadership can sustain a powerful and growing PMO that satisfy all stakeholders by in uh, the executive uh, sponsorship. Uh, actually, uh, uh, sponsors uh, uh, or a sponsor has to be defined for the PMO. Sponsors are mostly uh, uh, one of the senior executives within the organization who plays a significant role in the, the, uh, in the delivery uh, of projects. Uh, uh, actually, they are ambassadors for the PMO to internal and external stakeholders. Uh, finally, the uh, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is, uh, or emo emotional quotient in, in some literature, is the ability to um, sense, understand, manage, and apply the information and power of emotions as a source of energy, motivation, connection, and influence within the organization. Uh, they can support team performance because they focus on the human experience. Don't forget that uh, a successful PMO leader uh, has to engage members' hearts as well as their minds. Uh, finally, uh, these are uh, the contacts of uh, PMO concept. If you like to, to contact where uh, you are most welcome. And uh, thank you very much. I'll uh, uh, supply also in the chat box uh, um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, or our uh, uh, website uh, URL, then you can catch. Thank you very much for patience and uh, hope you are enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mahmoud, uh, for such a detailed description uh, of the CBPMO framework. Now, each participant uh, can not only download the CBPMO framework, but also uh, you gain knowledge how uh, to use it and what processes are inside. And uh, now we have uh, the last speaker for today. For today. Uh, let me introduce you, Corinne O'Brien. Uh, she is Vice President of Global Partnerships at PMO Global Institute. Corinne is an uh, expert uh, communicator who has benefited from engaging in multiple uh, work experiences across industry verticals, uh, uh, finance, education, and hospitality. She has gained a, a deep understanding uh, of the diversity of project management, gaining cross-cultural expertise from operating in six countries uh, across three continents continents over the past 16 years. Corinne understands how hard uh, it can be to drive constructive uh, and lasting change in organizations. Uh, by sharing the knowledge of PMO, Global Institute CBPMO framework uh, and uh, guidebook, uh, Corinne strives to change the fabric of PMOs across uh, uh, continents by ensuring PMOs are not simply uh, performing, but succeeding, thriving, and speaking the same same global language. So Corinne, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Mahmoud, for your presentation. That was excellent. And um, thank you for being with us tonight, you know, giving us your time. We do really, really appreciate it. We, um, here at PMO Global Institute, our purpose, we built this institute out of frustration, basically. We've seen that 75% of PMOs are failing within the first three years, and this is globally. And um, thank you, Blaze, very much for your poll. It was really interesting to see, actually, the, um, the amount of PMOs that we have with us, actually, in this room. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nadine. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. So just to start off with my section on careers in PMO. If you are working in a PMO right now, or you have had experience of working in a PMO in the past, please can you write in the chat box, PMO. Let's see how many people we have working here within a PMO in the Ivory Coast or wherever you are tonight. Fantastic. Here we go. Jean-Pierre, Blaise, of course. Come on, Blaise, you're the expert. We saw this. We saw this. Frank, fantastic. Fantastic. Excellent. So we have a few PMOs in the house. Deborah, Dauda. Wonderful. Wonderful. This is amazing. I'm um, I'm sure that you guys, Cacao, I'm sure that you guys are um, champions within the PMO space, within the Ivory Coast. Um, PMO Global Institute, we've been undertaking and still are undertaking a massive research project. So we actually interviewed over 10,000 project managers in over 150 countries. We found, um, I'm sure you guys working within a PMO, I'm sure you found many, many challenges. And actually we found that the reason for most failures of PMOs is actually the human factor. It's the human factor. As Mahmoud was explaining, that PMO leadership layer at the bottom of the CB PMO framework is so important. Of course, we look to other PMO frameworks out there, but the leadership layer was missing. How can it be missing? You know, that executive sponsorship is so important to the success of a PMO and the emotional intelligence that you need when you're dealing with multiple project managers. You're all project managers here. Um, project managers are not the best people to change their mindsets. I hope uh, I'm not insulting anybody, but when you have 15 project managers, all working on different projects within an organization. It's very, very difficult to change minds, to get everybody on board within the PMO. The PMO is often seen as the project management police dishing out policies, procedures, governance, but we know that a PMO is much, much more than that. So, here at PMO Global Institute, we're here to support you. We're here to find those champions of the PMO space, and we want to help you to succeed. So let me just share my screen with you guys, and let's have a look at how you can become involved with PMO Global Institute. So the first way is to become a member. This is completely free and you can see the CB PMO framework for yourself and you can become part of the biggest PMO global community on the planet. So Nadine, if you could please share the link and if we can all just take a minute um, to sign up and become a member of PMO Global Institute. This will help you with newsletters, community events, and of course, having the framework itself in your hands. Tonight, and I hope you've all been listening, in the contest, five lucky winners are going to win a regular membership. This is such a good prize tonight, guys. Please play the quiz at the end of this presentation. What you can do with a regular membership is you can download your own version of this. Oh, so this is the PMO guidebook. As uh, Mahmoud was describing, 
The framework covers around 200 pages here, but the guidebook itself is filled with templates, checklists. It's a fantastic practical guide. So please become a member and also play the quiz later. That's the first way. The second way is you can become a CBPMO consultant. Becoming a CBPMO consultant means that you can go into an organization and you can go through the framework using our tools to provide a successful platform for a PMO. So this means you're going to be able to implement the health checks, maturity assessments, getting down to um, developing those KPIs, evaluating the return on investment and learning this PMO leadership. The course is 21 hours in length, um, usually over two weekends. Mahmoud is having his next training program on the 12th of August. So if you would like to become a CBPMO consultant and really improve the success rates of the PMO within your organization, community and beyond, please see Mahmoud's website. It's just in the chat box there, 12th of August, a 21 hour course. Thank you. The next way is that you can become a business partner of PMO Global Institute. So when you become a business partner, you also become an authorized instructor. This is to build, if you have, if you have that passion for PMO, if you have that passion for seeing your community, if you are an educator at heart and you love training, this is your opportunity not only to become an instructor within your community, but to be also an independent PMO consultant. As our business partner, we will support you with training, tools, account manager, software, everything that you need to develop and thrive in your own business. So those are the three ways to become involved with PMO Global Institutes. Become a member, become a consultant, and become a business partner. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us tonight. And I'm really wishing you lots of luck in the quiz. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you for letting uh, uh, all participants know how they can uh, uh, go uh, up uh, on the career ledger. And uh, now we have um, the QA part. So the main session is over. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type in a chat box, or you can also raise a hand and uh, ask it directly to our speakers. So please uh, don't be shy, ask questions. All right, ask to unmute. You can unmute and ask the question. Hello. Hi, Jean-Pierre. Hi. Hi. Hi, Corinne. How are you? Good evening. Hi. I'm really well. Thank you for being with us. Yes, thank Hi, you. Jean Hi, Jean-Pierre. Hi, Jean-Pierre. Yes. Hi, Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have some questions. Uh, I will start by the first one. Uh, I, I just uh, read, uh, uh, I need first to know uh, if I can have an example of, of methodology that we use to calculate or evaluate the PMO return on investment. I, I mean that we have uh, highlighted some some measurement performance, uh, but I need if you can just give some example how to evaluate or to calculate the PMO return on investment. This is my first question. And the second line to this, uh, successful project means as well, successful PMO. Uh, I need to know. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Um, yeah. So firstly, I hope that you win the prize tonight because you will see all of the evaluations and equations to evaluate the ROI. Um, but I think I'll pass this to our authorized instructor here, Mahmoud. Can you give some examples on evaluating ROI? Okay, uh, there are a set of questions to, uh, 
uh, uh, sorry, a set of equations that answer your question. Uh, for the return on investment, you uh, 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 what you would like to to um, calculate the return of investment of your uh, uh, collective projects or uh, the uh, set of projects under the uh, control of your PMO, right? Then uh, you have to uh, use the following question, uh, the, the following equation: um, uh, calculate the uh, uh, revenue uh, of all your uh, your uh, projects and calculate the your cost uh, of your projects then subtract uh, the uh, the two values uh, 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 um, uh, total revenue minus total cost divide divided by total cost and then uh, 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 multiply by 100 this will come up uh, to you with the return on investment of your uh, uh, accumulated uh, uh, projects in uh, under the, the control of your PMO. Uh, uh, other thing, uh, if you'd like to, to um, uh, calculate the uh, profit margin, use the same equation uh, um, with uh, some minor uh, uh, deviation. Uh, uh, total uh, revenue minus total cost divided by revenue, uh, uh, multiplying by 100. The, the, this equation, it gives you the uh, net profit margin of the uh, 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 total projects of your uh, PMO. Uh, Fantastic, Mahmoud, well remembered. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. What uh, the second question? Can you remember? The second thing, question was: um, Does the success of the projects mean the success of the PMO? How are they yes. correlated? Yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, if you would like to to uh, um, uh, evaluate the, the success of your project, uh, come to first the objectives of your PMO the uh, key performance indicators you set from the beginning for your PMO. Uh, you uh, uh, set the uh, 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 set of uh, key performance indicators uh, in the beginning. You get the uh, approval of uh, your uh, sponsor and your uh, top level uh, executives in your organization. Then, uh, uh, from time to time, um, maybe if, uh, every um, uh, quarter, every um, uh, uh, semi-annually or, or annually, you uh, uh, review, you make a review for these uh, indicators. Uh, for example, um, uh, suppose you, you uh, 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 set the uh, percent of uh, projects completed on time uh, as one of your indicators. Then uh, uh, check this value uh, after some uh, period of time. Uh, um, you can compare this value with uh, 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 a previous value. Uh, then, or before you, you, uh, you uh, create your PMO and after you create your PMO. Suppose we have uh, 30 projects. Uh, before we crea create our PMO, the percent of uh, uh, projects completed on time uh, is uh, 16. After we uh, uh, created our team, or the percentage uh, jumped to uh, 24. Then the, the, this variance will show up to your leadership uh, the value of uh, your uh, team, or uh, specifically and on a, a scientific way. Um, instead of uh, um, uh, saying uh, and explaining uh, the performance uh, of your team, your, your efforts, uh, your uh, uh, investments, your um, uh, spending uh, values, uh, and, and so on. Uh, use specific indicators. Uh, this will help you to uh, uh, stand on uh, a solid uh, uh, base uh, uh, to prove the, the value of your team. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, you Mahmoud. Yes, I have you two last question, but I will let the flow to others. I will ask the question later. Or oh, if not, I can uh, uh, I let the flow to others and we ask uh, the last two questions after, yeah. Sure, you can ask, Cynthia. Okay, okay, I, I will ask. So my another question is that about uh, 
I will take an example of the company. We understand now the importance of PMO and the need uh, to set up a PMO. Uh, for you, what is the best way to do that is to hire a senior PMO and after let him to define how to set up the PMO or it is to the company to set up what they want the PMO to be in the company. For you, what is the best way to set up uh, a PMO for the company we understanding the importance of the PMO. This is uh, another questions. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. Perfect. Yes. Yes. I, I yes. Uh, okay. Can, can I answer you before? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Yes, go, go. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, in the CBPMO framework, uh, there is a, a set of rules you have to, to pass, pass through uh, to create your successful PMO. Uh, uh, first of all, you, uh, I, I can summarize it. Uh, there are more details in the PMO guidebook. Uh, you can refer to, uh, and I, I hope you, you win the prize. Uh, 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 you have to uh, uh, study the uh, organizational objectives of your organization to uh, put the, uh, the uh, structure that is, uh, um, that is uh, yeah, uh, uh, suitable for the organization context. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you are a, a construction company, uh, the construction company, uh, uh, all of its uh, uh, projects uh, are uh, construction projects. Uh, all of the functions are supporting the, the construction projects. So uh, it, it's more reliable for the, the, this uh, company to create uh, uh, an enterprise PMO or a portfolio PMO, if we can say. Uh, if we, uh, we speak about uh, a bank um, uh, or um, uh, other financial organization, uh, and there are uh, uh, some IT division inside the bank. Uh, maybe it's sufficient for the, the, uh, the uh, bank to create uh, an organizational unit PMO or uh, uh, a PMO only for the IT. Uh, now the, the, there's a difference in the structure of the PMO. Here is uh, an organizational unit PMO. And on the first example, uh, an enterprise PMO. This is for the, the uh, first uh, uh, structure. Uh, now we come to the role. Uh, what are you uh, um, intending uh, 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 to get uh, as an organization from the PMO? Uh, do you like uh, the PMO just to support, give uh, um, guidelines, um, uh, make available uh, some methodologies, uh, policies, uh, procedures, uh, and templates for the uh, project uh, teams? Or, or you would like to, the PMO to directly uh, uh, control or, or, or di direct the, the uh, PM, uh, project managers and the project teams and be fully responsible for the, uh, the uh, uh, delivery of the projects. In this case, you, you have to, to create a direct PMO. Uh, then it's uh, according to the objectives of the PMO and the context inside the PMO. You have to study uh, the... the, uh, the uh, organization and its objectives uh, and you have to, to discuss it with uh, the uh, uh, leaders of this organization to specify the uh, uh, form and the structure type uh, uh, suitable for this organization. The, the, the uh, next steps is, is much easier. Once you, you uh, uh, know uh, the, the structure type, then you start to uh, assess the uh, uh, needs of the uh, the, the fu functions uh, inside the organization. Uh, we you have to uh, 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 study the uh, uh, budget um, can can be uh, used to fund the PMO, uh, uh, the structure um, uh, inside the PMO itself, and the the champions you need uh, to uh, assign inside the the PMO. Um, uh, whether you you have to um, 
uh, assign uh, uh, TMO lead uh, director, TMO manager, TMO analyst, TMO director, according to, to the, uh, the budget uh, they are uh, intend to spend, uh, then you can choose. Uh, then uh, uh, make a small PMO, uh, a small TOC uh, uh, or uh, uh, proof of concept uh, uh, for um, uh, around three months to um, assess the uh, viability of the uh, suggested PMO structure. Uh, and then uh, once uh, succeeded, you um, uh, uh, go, uh, go through the, the next step uh, of creating the full uh, power TMO uh, that can be uh, 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 that can run uh, automatically to, uh, after this step. Okay, thank you so much, Mahmoud. Um, also, we have uh, some questions in our chat box, so maybe mm -hmm. shortly we'll uh, answer them. Uh, I see. Okay. okay. Uh. Um, Mahmoud, please unmute yourself. Thank you. So the first question is, uh, how can I convince my manager to implement a PMO in my organization? Can you give uh, some tips? So maybe some tips uh, you can give. Uh, actually, uh, actually, don't start uh, to aim with them. I need uh, $100,000 uh, $100, to start uh, a PMO. Don't uh, go, go like this. Uh, I, I don't, um, uh, I, I do um, uh, employ uh, five persons in uh, my PMO. Please uh, make them available for me. Don't do like this. Uh, just study and uh, uh, create a business case. Uh, the business case uh, um, uh, specify the challenges uh, uh, of your organization, uh, the benefits that, uh, that can uh, uh, um, uh, be, uh, solve this, uh, these challenges and uh, face these uh, uh, challenges uh, of your organization, uh, then the complete business case uh, have to be uh, presented well to your leaders. Uh, and think uh, that way, I think uh, uh, they will agree or, or, or at least uh, uh, have uh, to, to listen smoothly for your uh, suggestion. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, our, uh, this are a set of uh, steps. We can do uh, just just to add some some recommendation just quickly. Um, uh, yes, you know please, you yeah. can you can bring some numbers in terms of uh, uh, percentage of project failure and in terms of uh, mm -hmm. processes in the company and in terms of a number of. Uh, project that the company need to manage. Because when there's a single or two project, a project manager alone can manage. But when the quantity of project is, is growing very quickly, then there is a need to, uh, to put all together. And when there are many projects that uh, involve many de departments, then a high level uh, coordination is needed. But the best way uh, is to bring numbers that uh, this is the quantity of uh, the percentage of project failure or the project that we have to manage is fast growing and a single project manager in a single department will not be able to do that cross-functional uh, coordination. So you can use these numbers to, to actually uh, convince your manager to, to bring down uh, the PMO in the, team, in the company. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Blaze, for sure, your addition. You. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, should I be a PMP certified before leading a PMO? Who will take this question? Corey? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can all add a little bit. We can all yeah, add a little okay. bit, I think. Um, so, of course, you know, the PMP is the number one project management certification on the planet. And I think, you know, it assesses your skills, it gives you the process. Um, absolutely, for PMPs, it's the number one, it is. Um, 
to it doesn't we don't need a PMV validation to take the CBPMO certification, but we do require 7,500 hours of project management experience. So I think if you are a PMP, you absolutely have that. Um, or if you're not a PMP and you have the experience, then absolutely, you know, experience is what it takes to be on the job um, and to, to move into a PMO when you're knowing how to deal with singular projects and then moving to the project management office. But please, Blaze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I will not say uh, it is really compulsory, but for me, before moving to PMO uh, level, you have to get all these bases. Definitely. So I will say uh, it, is, it, will, it, is a, it, is a, it is very good, it is very important to be at least uh, certified in project manager. We have PMP, we have Prince2, not only PMP, but we also have Prince2. But you need to get this basic certification. How are you going to support people, project managers that maybe they, they may be PGMP, portfolio uh, management certified, mm -hmm. or maybe PFMMP. But how are you going to, to support them, to guide them if you are not, uh, you don't have the best practices in the market? So mm -hmm. I would say you may learn project management uh, principle or uh, processes alone without being PMP or Prince to award. But for me, it is the best way to get all this very fast and be able to really coach other project managers. Thank you. Thank you, Blaise. And Corinne, please uh, take one more complimentary question. Uh, I think about we have Beso, Dominique, a that's his, his way. Yeah. A relation between PMO Global Institute and PMI. Uh, yes, so um, we've been hosting events on four different continents and um, yeah, we're getting a beautiful response from the PMI community. And I think, um, yeah, the PMP, we see it as the best certification on the planet for project management, but it is very different to running a project management office. So the relationship with PMI, um, we would love a relationship with PMI in the future, um, and, and it's coming. We're actually going to be doing some huge PMI events towards the end of this year, face-to-face, um, -face, hopefully, if uh, COVID stays away. But yeah, we're going to get involved in a lot of conferences. Um, so yes, absolutely, we'll be building our relationship with PMI going forward into the future. Perfect. So, and uh, we have also Dominique uh, who would like to ask some questions. All right, Dominique, please, your floor. I think, thank you very much. Uh, my question has been um, partly answered uh, through the other questions that have been asked. So I would like to thank all the, the presentations that we have. Uh, the informations were very useful. It was nice. Thank you. Uh, I just want to, to, to ask something is, uh, what are the main skills that are needed to be a good uh, PMO manager? Is a good project manager, a good PMO manager, and or there is, uh, the, the, we have another skills that, that are needed to, to be a good PMO manager. Thank you very much. Who will take this question? Let me yeah. start. Yes, Let me start. go for it, Blaise. Uh, yeah, I was yeah, going to say, you. our PMO expert here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, yeah. uh, Bissou, for, 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 the, for the question, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. I think let's, let's first take what is, the, what is the, the role of the PMO, the scope. The PMO is there first to, uh, to close the gap between the company strategy vision and all the initiatives. So the, the, if the, the best, I mean, the best, the successful way to evaluate the PMO is there. So what is required to, to close this gap? The PMO should first understand what is project. This is for me, basic. He should understand project. He should have a long experience in project management in different environment because you need to guide other people. Now the PMO should also understand business. So he should have a very good business agreement to translate the vision. You may be working directly with the CEO or maybe someone that only talks a business or maybe finance. So you should understand that part and bring it to the team in terms of uh, implementation. And now in terms of soft skill, 
you need to be very diplomatic person, very open because putting all together, going to people, getting information from them, and then uh, bringing back some procedure and uh, uh, make sure that everyone will accept, will apply, require leadership and uh, servant leadership skill, uh, and then very good communication to put everyone together uh, and then uh, all the company to work in the same direction. Thank you, thank you, Blaze, for covering this question. And for today, I think we'll be the last one question from Jean-Pierre, <laughs> and then we will uh, start playing Kahoot game. So Jean-Pierre, please ask your question, yes. and we will move quickly, on. Quickly, I would thank you again for giving me the floor. So thank you for this presentation, all the questions answered. I will quickly first, uh, how the PMO can avoid more bureaucracies and uh, how the PMO can use innovation to deal with the challenges they are facing? This is my last question. All right, who will take this question? You want to start, Mahmoud, or? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, to, to the question, how the PMO can avoid uh, bureaucracy and also bring innovation. Um, one, one thing that is uh, really uh, important to understand in the PMO role is that uh, it depends on uh, the need of the company first, like the company that implemented the, 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 the PMO. And also it depends on the maturity of the company. If you take a company that is there for a very long time, most of the time, the processes are very well known. The project managers are uh, autonomous enough, enough. So the project, uh, the PMO will relatively move to uh, supporting and uh, controlling or supporting. And this will be relative, uh, I mean, slightly uh, bureaucratic because you will have to put together processes. And But if you want to avoid this, you can target, I mean, with the agreement of the sea level, you can target some new projects, some challenging projects, some projects that have higher risk, and then propose that because of the risk and because of the learning that we may get from this project, you suggest that it is managed by the PMO himself. Maybe the PMO may dedicate a project manager to manage that project to make sure that all the learning are gathered and no information is missed. So you can propose this one to, uh, to, to, to the C level. And also mainly if we take company like startups, there they are always uh, trying to learn new thing and uh, immediate systematically if you propose this kind of uh, you know option to the C level that okay you want to make sure that you gather all the maximum information so you want to manage yourself then you will move slightly from bureaucracy to executing and directing yourself and now to innovation point you know uh, you have to make sure that all the information that are coming from the project execution you put together and from uh, other a certain period, you will get some train in terms of uh, uh, learning that can help you to find, uh, to find some pattern in terms of innovation for the company. So this is what I see that uh, I suggest can be applied. I don't know if Mamun, you want to add something? Yes, yeah, so I'll just, just add uh, so some point. Uh, that the, the key point is the continuous improvement. You have uh, uh, not to stay on uh, some level uh, and uh, say that uh, everything is okay, um, uh, my team is working well, uh, and uh, the set objectives uh, are already uh, implemented well. Uh, no, uh, uh, try to uh, improve uh, uh, your PMO performance all the time, day by day. Try to uh, uh, go to the next level of, of maturity. Uh, uh, sit for your PMO uh, uh, um, uh, uh, every day, uh, a new challenge and a new goal you have to uh, um, uh, come to. Uh, by uh, th this way, uh, I think you, you will uh, be far from uh, bureaucracy. Uh, for your team, uh, one point uh, again is to uh, uh, encourage your team innovation, your team new ideas, be open uh, to to hear from your team and fr from you uh, uh, and encourage them to for uh, new ideas, uh, new um, uh, 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 ways of work. Uh, I think this will will help you well 
to uh, uh, improve your uh, your team or to be more innovative, to more more beneficial to your organization. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, participants, uh, for being so active, and uh, thankful uh, to all speakers for your brilliant answers. And now we are going uh, to play Kahoot game. So take your phones uh, in your hands and open uh, in browser uh, this link www.